Yeah, I mean, we can. What's the time? Uh, maybe give it one more minute, and then we'll we'll um yeah, really really keen to hear hear any DSC announcements. V three, awesome. <laughs> All right, just let me know when you uh, want me to get started. Uh, we'll give it uh, give it one more minute. Wait till we I get to the next set of lights. Mikey, is there anything you want to cover today? Anything anything on the on the doc side? Uh, there will be a slew of uh, pre docs for um, the next release, and uh, I'm working through a review. Uh, Josh Poor added Josh Pork added. Uh, but will be two new tutorials to the samples repo. Uh, so there will shortly be a new tutorial up for implementing a DSC v3 resource in C Sharp to go along with the example we have in Go. And uh, one that is a manifest only resource, it reuses the existing um, TZ util uh, command line utility to manage time zones, but without having to write any code, just a manifest file. So both of those tutorials will be going up once I get through the review and munging process there. Gotcha. Okay. Well, maybe up Steve um, goes, you can, you know, if you've got anything you want to share on screen, um, show oh, those nothing, PRs. Nothing probably worth sharing on the screen, to be honest. Um, things are in <laughs> progress. So, so here, here's what I'll say. Right. Kick um, us off, Steve. So, yeah, kick us off. No, what was that? I was going to say, kick us off, Steve. I reckon, okay, yeah, okay. let's get, let's get, let's yeah. Get going. Uh, I don't have any prepared demos right now, but one of the reasons oh, is, yeah. um, We've been very busy with uh, since the last alpha release with a whole bunch of uh, changes, which is also why Mikey is so busy with the docs because there's a lot of stuff that needs to be documented. Um, but basically, I'm, what I'm hoping is either tomorrow, which is looking not as likely now, uh, so probably next week because we don't like to release on a Friday. But um, so let's just assume for now next week, unless somehow things go well this week, uh, we'll have a first preview release, so a non-alpha release. So this is effectively going to be beta quality. Um, it, basically, what that means is that all the major changes and features that we had planned will be in this release. Now, there will still be some small changes com coming, small features and stuff like that, but hopefully nothing that would um, bring about a breaking change, which is one of the main things. Like, uh, If you have played with some of the early ones, uh, we've had a lot of schema changes as we've learned and gotten feedback. We've made changes, and we will still have uh, as a warning during the preview, uh, the potential for a breaking change and up until we get to the release candidate, in which case the bar will be really high. So we will take um, feedback and anything that is relevant. Because again, um, since we haven't gotten to a GA yet, it means that we really need to say, hey, this schema and this design is going to be it for the next, let's say, 10 years kind of situation. All right. Anyways, there's been a large number of changes um, in the platform. Um, it will all be uh, documented by Mikey, so we'll have all that available. I will see if I can find some time to also craft up a blog post uh, in time. Um, it won't be in time if it's this week, but maybe next week. Uh, and I will have a session at PSConf EU to talk a lot more about this in detail uh, and kind of walk through um, both the resource authoring side, but also configuration authoring side. Um, and that's in June, so that gives me uh, two months to work on that. Uh, and we'll continue to, to add more um, stuff to the release. Uh, so we'll be going, so we're going to be skipping a, so the last release was Alpha 5. We're going to have the next release, hopefully coming soon, will be a preview 7. And I'll, I'll detail this probably in the blog post if I can get it out. But basically, we're skipping 6 because to test publishing to the Microsoft Store as a MSI, MSIX package, I actually had used the Alpha 6 versioning. And the store doesn't allow you to republish the same version, so I had to increment it to seven. So that's the reason we're skipping six. But that means that we are planning on publishing for Windows um, DSC v3 onto the store. So you can use that as another means to get it that way. And once we have it in the store, that means you can also install it via WinGet, um, even on server 2025, I believe. Um, we'll still have oh, zip cool. packages and tar GZs for non-Windows as well. So. Nice. That sounds that sounds awesome. Any any questions from the community for, on that stuff? Oh, one other thing I'll mention real quick. Uh, just like how we do it in PowerShell Seven, there will be on the store. There will also be a preview channel and a stable channel. Obviously, the stable channel doesn't exist yet because we don't have a stable release. But it means that um, if you're going to help um, do some validation, give us feedback during the previews, it will be. Um, I think I spelled it out: desire state configuration dash preview. 
I don't think I called it DSC. I don't remember now. Um, but then there'll be separately later on a D, uh, I think it's actually Microsoft.dsc. I forget that. Anyways, I'll, more detailed information will come out later and we'll have it in the docs as well on how to easily install this stuff. So you're looking for any feedback from the community once that releases out? Um, yes, both for they, resource authoring they, and also configuration authoring. Awesome. Cool. And just provide the, any feedback in the, the, the GitHub repo. For That's right. To side state. Yes. Cool. And and uh, what I don't need yet is any requests about biceps support because that is in the roadmap for the future. All right. So that that is already well known. <laughs> okay. So search the GitHub issues before posting, just in case. So, yes. Cool. So so you um you'd like to get a GA version? What was the timeline you mentioned? So okay. So the preview hopefully will come out. N I'm going to say next week sometime um I, I my internal targets for release candidate is hopefully like june ish time frame but to be honest it really depends on the feedback that we get from the community and our partners in terms of uh not just features but also quality um so we'll have to see how that goes i i don't want to have a date driven release but that's kind of like the rough timeline of uh when we can get to an rc once we hit an rc it means there's no more features it's only critical bug fixes we may have to have multiple release candidates and then finally a ga and of course, after GA, we'll have a 3.1 and also 3.01 releases as needed. Excellent. That well, sounds very exciting. Sounds like we're getting close. Yes. A lot, lot of progress, in my opinion, has been made since the last uh, alpha. Excellent. So um, any, any questions? Anyone want to jump off mute, ask a question, drop something in the chat? I haven't been checking the chat if there has been any questions. No, quite quiet in the chat right now. There's only the nine chat. people here, including you and me. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, fair enough. Uh, we'll we'll we will. Uh, I will upload this recording to the the DSC community YouTube. Um, but one question did come up, Steve. It's probably last in the last call, which was, do we look at rolling um, these these uh, DSC community calls into a segment in the PowerShell community call? So rather than rather than having it separate. So that was um, Michael Green mentioned that. Uh, Mikey, I think you were there as well. And it, it did seem to be that was the consensus, but we haven't made any progress on moving that forward. Um, we were going to put, I think from memory, we we're going to put together a form or something or connect some, collect something from the community. But Steve, as you're here now and you, you're obviously running those yeah. PowerShell community calls as well, what is your feeling on, on that potential? Uh... So this is just my opinion, all right? And I am always open for feedback. I think it probably makes sense for now to roll it in. I mean, the PowerShell community call is already the PowerShell open SSH community call anyways. Um, mm. And if we have a good problem where we have too much DSC content, we can always split it off again, right? Yeah, yeah. When, when that day comes. Yeah, that. So you need... <laughs> When that day exactly when they did V3, we're going to have all, all sorts of we're going to have a huge, huge amount of content. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, it does seem to make sense. I'm keen to any any opinions from the community if you're if you feel comfortable with you come off mute or drop something in the chat. Um, you know, obviously, there's there is a small, small core group of people who and who, who are attending these, but if you, you know, if you think there's value in combining that with the PowerShell community and and uh, especially if you're on different time zones, that may work. So maybe Steve, that's if unless we get any objections, maybe we we plan to do that. I don't know if you, I can ping you offline and we can, because um, I haven't talked, I haven't got a confirmation from Gail yet and whether he thinks that's a, you know, let's do let's go with that. So um, and uh, Johan, who doesn't doesn't typically make these calls because it's a terrible time. So yeah, Sweden. Um, but it. Yeah, it seems to be that it seems to be that's the consensus. We haven't had any big objection. So so maybe I'll, I'll ping you offline about that one. Yeah, I definitely want to get Gil's uh, opinion. Otherwise, yeah. The, the other thing I just it's, want to mention real quick, like um another thing that maybe we can consider is we can roll in like announcements and demos and stuff like that for DSC into the PowerShell community call. I, I think it may still be worthwhile, especially early on, once we get closer to like a release candidate to maybe reuse this call. And we can decide whether it's on a different time or cadence as more like an office hours kind of thing. So as people author resources yeah. and configuration, um, we can get, people can get help from the Microsoft side. 
awesome call. Okay, good good idea. I'll um I'll um I'll recap this for get a, get a co-pilot recap out of this and we'll send that over to Gail and, and get his thoughts on that. Okay. My my only ask though, if we want to shift this like an office hours kind of thing, is I want to make sure um people submit uh, request ahead of time so that if there isn't anything, we can all not we can all use that time in different ways, better ways. Yeah, understand. And not just get wait a, around a, for something to happen. Kind of together. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that. Um, awesome. Okay. We'll we'll um we'll take a look at the next steps of that, talk to Gail and maybe send a send an email send an email up and get that going. Um any uh, final comments on that stuff before we move it over, over to Mikey and Mikey's updates? Oh, uh, yep. I think we got a hand up. Yeah, I have a question actually. It's um, I'm not sure if you know about it, Steve, but actually we are looking for using um, managed identity on the VM to access the configuration content uh, in a storage account, um, especially for the subscription that are faced to internet directly. So. Are there any plans for those to could use managed identity? Uh, my understanding today, and I'm not an expert in this area, is that it is something that uh, I don't think you can do today, but it's being worked on. I think Jody, who is not on this call today, would probably be a better resource to answer that question. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Plus, do you know, uh, jo if you're on the um, the PowerShell Discord, I think Jody, Jody Boone is in that Discord, so you could ping her there. She's also on Twitter. She often does come to these sessions. Yeah, I give it a try. Thanks. So you, if you, yeah. Cool. Any other any other questions from the community? But that, that's a good one. I I've, I've had similar questions where using the identity of the VM to access resources, configs, et cetera, out on Azure storage accounts. So I'd be interested to hear about that one as well. Lars, if you do get get a concrete answer from Jody. Mikey, I'm gonna come off mute. Tell us what you tell us what your updates are. Yeah, uh, I'm dropping a pair of links real quick to the DSC samples uh, site and repo. So as we move into uh, out of alpha and into preview, uh, it'll get a lot easier for me to write more tutorials with confidence because the updates uh, that are required won't be as heavy. Um, and on that note, there the samples that are in the repository right now are going to have to be updated for a bunch of the schema changes that we've just made. Um, so I will get those out as soon as I can, uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, and the second is that we've been working for the last couple of months as we update the schemas and figure out how things can and should look um, to define pretty robust JSON schemas for uh, resource manifests and configuration files. Um, and we've done some pre-wiring for you so that uh, even though there isn't a dedicated VS Code extension, you can actually use um, the YAML and JSON extensions and you get some pretty cool uh, IntelliSense and validation. So I'm just going to show that off real quick. Uh, and this is using the most updated schemas, which are not released yet. Just before you see things and go, I don't know what that is. So real quick, I'm going to just come down into here and I'm going to open up an example uh, manifest here. So uh, as we've talked about before, you can write your uh, resource manifests in uh, DSC v3 um, in JSON. We've also made it possible uh, in the last release for you to write them in YAML, uh, which you might find a little bit easier to read and maintain. Um, but the nice thing here is that what you'll get is uh, IntelliSense and validation um, as you're authoring your resource manifests. So uh, we've put in the work to make sure that um, all of the uh, possible values for your resource manifest also link to uh, online documentation. So I click that link and it takes me 
directly to the online edition of the docs, which includes examples and a bunch of other stuff that would be hard to show in uh, IntelliSense. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we also get uh, validation for um, the values that you put in. So here, if I go and I say I'm going to start typing, and I'm going to say that my input is going to be a hash table, right? I get an error. Um, and so it says the value is not accepted. The valid values are EMV and standard in. I can also use IntelliSense to uh, pick from the options list. And we're using VS Code's extended syntax to provide you with uh, in editor help for each of the enum values whenever there is a specific set of enums. Daniel, I see your hand is up. Yeah, this, this is awesome. I was just wanting to ask uh, which resource. Are there any limitations on which resource or resource types are supported and where it's looking for those resources, just like on the local machine? Right. So in this case, this is the manifest that defines the resource you're currently authoring. Um, so I think you're you're gotcha. wondering more I, about configuration documents. Yeah, my bad. I the... can't actually see your screen, so I'm <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm basically going off what I'm what I'm hearing. <laughs> Apologies. Oh, yeah. yes. No, so no worries. Car, I can't actually look. So. Yeah, so what I was showing off was the resource manifest, which is how command-based resources, resources that are implemented as scripts or um, as standalone binaries or um, that are wrapping existing binaries uh, um, are uh, advertised to DSC. But similarly for um, configurations, we have the same sort of uh, information. What we don't have yet uh, because our JSON schemas are currently static, is a way to tell you IntelliSense-wise, like what types are available, um, what what DSC resources can I use? Um, so we can just define for this the structure of uh, um, your configuration document. But that being the case, one of the new things that's going to be in the next release is a special set of uh, metadata. Uh, and here uh, you can actually define that um, and you get the IntelliSense, the autocomplete um, and the hover help uh, that you would have gotten from the manifest definition. Um, Steve, do you want to talk a little bit about the security context uh, um, sure. metadata value? So um, current just is a kind of like a place so it just means allow for whoever they're currently running is. But the more interesting one is going to be elevated and restricted. Um, and this will work across both Windows and non-Windows, although we're using more like the Windows terms here. Um, elevated means that uh, if you're not running as admin or root, uh, it will complain and not run the uh, run the uh, configuration because it requires it. Conversely, if you set to restricted and you are elevated or root, then it will also complain. Um, although in the future, again, when I say future, I don't know if it's going to be part of the 3.0 release. We could allow that if it's restricted, required, and your admin that we can downgrade um, and start a new process. That's something that will depend on customer feedback, whether that's really that important to spend time on. Oh, by the way, before I move on, there's, uh, so regarding the resource discovery and stuff like that, so that is in, um, how do I want to put this? I, want, I don't want to say it's it's in plan. Not it won't be aligned with the 3.0 release, but that's certainly something we want as part of uh, configuration authoring. It'll probably come with work that we'll do in the future with Bicep. But if you don't want to use Bicep or don't use Bicep, we'll probably uh, look into a probably a custom VS Code extension as well. So we'll have to evaluate those options, and it probably won't happen concurrently. It'll be one and then the other, at best. So. Um, one other thing uh, that we've put in place already uh, is um, so you also get uh, snippets that are built in to uh, the configuration and manifest files. So in this case, uh, we're saying that we want to add uh, a dependency uh, to the uh, resource. And so it scaffolds out the uh, configuration function that you need in order to do that. Um, and we'll probably look to add some more snippets. I'm uh, waiting for some of the merges to go through, and all these changes will be additive, so they won't break existing schemas. Um, uh, but then you could 
uh, use a snippet to add configuration functions, which will maybe be a little bit easier rather than having to look at the syntax and remember it. <clears throat> I haven't figured out how I'm going to validate them yet in just the YAML, so that's not on the table yet. Um, some of the other things that we have here, so like uh, configuration documents support um, uh, parameters the same way that uh, ARM uh, templates do. So here I can define a new parameter and then I can select the type that my parameter is going to be. So in this case, I'll say it's a Boolean. Uh, I don't need a lot of values for a Boolean. And then in my uh, resource, I can actually reference these now. So I could do, I think it's parameter. Uh, Um, but we're adding a slew of configuration functions, uh, and that PR is up, so those docs will be landing concurrent with uh, this next release. Uh, and I'll look to get um, snippets for uh, the schemas in order to support that, too, so that you don't have to look it up every time yourself. Um, but yeah, so we've been putting a lot of work into the schemas uh, to make sure that you get a decent authoring experience, uh, even though we don't have an extension. And a lot of the changes that are coming are going to be, uh, I think, really useful for folks. So a good example is Steve just merged uh, a new set of changes that adds metadata to the output for configuration operations. Um, so now when you run DSC config get, you get back um, metadata that tells you uh, a little bit about the run in addition to your results. So uh, now your results will include what version of DSC ran to generate uh, the output you're looking at, what operation was it. Um, this execution type uh, is either going to be uh, actual for everything but set uh, or actual or what if for set. So if you run DSC config set with uh, the what if flag, It'll tell you, I didn't actually change system state, but this is what I would have done if you'd let me. Um, and then we include start date, uh, start time, end time, uh, and the duration. And these are all um, uh, in the format that uh, JSON schema and um, most JSON parsers are going to expect. Uh, so this is 0 0.27 seconds, not quite. Uh, a third of a second is how long the run took. Uh, and then it also tell you the security context. Was this run elevated or uh, as a normal user? And then for each of the uh, resource instances from uh, from the uh, the configuration, how long did they take is the metadata that we're giving back right now. Um, These will be uh, in the repository uh, when the config, when the schema updates go live. Uh, so you'll be able to open up these files in uh, VS Code and kind of see what the output uh, data means. So I went ahead and uh, wired everything up uh, to give you um, uh, validation in TeleSense um, for the output results. Uh, I don't expect people to normally copy paste their output into VS Code to uh, read it necessarily, but I think it's useful to be able to do so. So that's what we put in place. This kind of gives you an idea of what actual state means versus uh, we look at test. Test output shows you uh, desired state. I'm going to wire up here. Oh, maybe I didn't. OK, I didn't tell this one which to use. Let's config. This should be test. So now it should tell me. 
Yep, here we go. So you get what desired state and actual state mean, uh, and then what differing properties represents. And I think we've talked about the output structure for uh, DSC v3 before, but it should give you a lot of things that you used to have to synthetically assemble yourself from DSC runs. Um, and so the set output will tell you what the state of your machine was before and after, and then what properties it actually changed. So you don't have to do all that investigation yourself. And that's all I have. Yeah, let me just add real quick, like well, um, a lot of the metadata stuff came in recently based off discussions Mike and I had. So if you guys have um, scenarios or use cases where other types of metadata is useful to you, be sure to open up issues in the repo. But what I what I'm gonna be I'm a little bit excited about in the future, and I don't know if I hope the community does this, but maybe we'll do it like imagine you can have visualization tools, right? That can actually do analysis of the resulting JSON and present like you know heat maps of what's taken a long time, what failed, like different ways of visualizing the the results more than just the text. So I'm hoping some other folks will do some of that work. Nice. Uh sounds like a great, great tool opportunity for someone. So um yeah, Mike, anything anything else before we wrap? Nope, just that there's going to be about 30 new uh, documentation files with this next release. <laughs> and once, uh, I guess that's the other thing. Uh, so I've had a heavy focus on reference documentation. Uh, while we're in alpha, as we move into preview, I'll be uh, writing more conceptual and narrative documentation as the APIs have stabilized. Because what I didn't want to do was write a ton of tutorials about how to do something and then have to rewrite them every two months as we uh, updated the implementation. Um, I didn't know how often that was going to happen, but I decided to invest most of my time in the reference. But now that the reference is going to be more stable, I'll be spending more time on those things. So um, if there's any scenarios uh, or concepts that you find particularly confusing, uh, file an issue uh, in the Docs repo, which I'll link here in a second, or uh, reach out to me wherever you can find me, and I'm happy to file an issue and start uh, digging into that work as well. Cool. Any uh, any final questions from the community for for Mikey, Steve, anyone? Nope. Okay. Uh, I think maybe then we will um, we will wrap it up. Um, I will. Um, someone, will, Steve, can you stop the recording for us? I'll upload this uh, recording, yes. and I will also set up a, um, 